We're also raising money for Catholic charities, the outreach to the poor and those who are in need. We're also raising some money to support the uh, diocesan center, um, what used to be called the Cousin Center. The Cousin Center needs some updating. It needs some improvement, and they want to uh, work on uh, the structure of the Cousin Center to improve uh, physically the building. They also want to help the cathedral. The cathedral needs to put a new roof on, and I, I know uh, that is going to be a large expense. As much as, yes, there is a community that belongs to the cathedral, it's still an overwhelming task. You know what happens when we have capital campaign for a parish. It's an overwhelming task to raise a lot of money. So we're going to do it through the capital campaign. And that's essential for the archdiocese. The archbishop felt, given the fact that we went through this terrible uh, bankruptcy situation, he wants to raise some money so that when he leaves his predecessor will have some money to work with and, and not be in a terrible state of, of financial difficulty. So that's what the archbishop would like to do, is to raise some money for the next guy who will be coming in. Then it is our, our case. Our case study focuses on safety. That's the overall reaching point of our case study. Number one, we're trying to improve safety. We put in new doors. That was number one. We're going to put in new railings. So there are going to be new railings, especially leading down to Father Turner Hall. We've had a number of accidents, especially in this entrance on the, on the uh, east side of the building, going down into Father Turner Hall. We want to extend that railing and make sure that it goes far enough that people don't fall down the stairs. Part of the reason, in 1950, the railing came to an abrupt end, but there was another step. And they forgot about that step. And what happens is people get down to the end of the railing and they forget there's another step and then they fall down. So we want to work on extending that railing and that those railings will be replaced in, in, in a better situation for up-to-date standards of today. The other thing that we've been doing is putting cameras around this. Uh, there's a camera here. If anyone gets into this church, we've got you. You're on candid camera. And there is a reason for that. You know that things are changing. And also, given the fact that uh, churches have been under attack, we want to have this all on camera. There's a camera in uh, Father, Father Turner Hall. There are cameras throughout the school. There are cameras throughout the entire church complex, outside and inside. Sometimes just walk around and take a look at how many cameras we have. There's a reason for that. And the police can come in and, they can, and the, the quality of the camera will catch whoever is doing whatever they are doing uh, very nicely. With that, we've added lighting. Since movement lighting. So if you walk into the usher's room, for example, you don't have to turn on a light. It comes on immediately. If you walk into the school building, into any of the entrances, the lights come on. If you walk in here in the church, we're adding sensor lighting so that everyone will be safe. You'll never be in the dark. So that's all safety factors that we've added to the building and will continue to update and upgrade. The other factor is uh, high efficiency heating and cooling. We put in a whole new cooling system to this church, but we're upgrading all of the, what used to be pneumatic systems. Now we're putting in a whole different kind of system board that will regulate the cooling and the heating of this church. I'm hoping that this summer, even though I won't be here, please send me an email and let me know that you're not freezing to death because they know that was part of the problem. We were freezing in here sometimes because it just wasn't regulated well. Well, we want to regulate that. Heating and cooling. And lastly, we want to actually add some money just in case something comes along that was not foreseen. So we're going to add some money to the finance, finance, uh, financial part of the parish so that you know as well as I Certain things pop up, unforeseen, that we need to take care of. Okay? 
That's our side. Now, what's going to happen? <coughs> Pardon me. Um, what's going to happen now, if you haven't received a mailing, you will. And in your mailing, there's a pledge letter. And that pledge letter is asking a certain amount of money. If you are able to fulfill that pledge, we are very excited. Because then that helps us continue to uh, keep the place safe and, and accomplish our goal. If you receive that and you return it, it's a five-year pledge. Five years. So you can extend it. You can pay it off immediately. It just depends on what you would like to do. But you will receive that pledge letter. And in that pledge letter, it is exactly that, a pledge. Some people ask me, Father, I don't know where I'll be in five years. I don't know what my physical or uh, health state will be. That's why it's a pledge. You pledge and you go forth hoping to complete that pledge. But I don't know what, what state of situation you'll be in, but hopefully we can continue and that you can continue and that you can help the parish. This is about the future of Blessed Sacrament. That's what it's about. We want to maintain our presence. We want to maintain a safe and quality building we want to also have good liturgies and the rest and the like. And so that's really, thank you. That's what we're going to work on. And that's really what it's about. Safety and keeping this wonderful parish alive and moving in the, in the correct direction. And so that's really what we're, we're trying to accomplish. And all of you can help us. I am very excited. I couldn't believe it. God has blessed us immensely. We have already initially raised $400,000. We have that raised and pledged already. $400,000. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are on the way. Our total pledge is $600,000. And I believe that we can accomplish our goal and probably even exceed it if we, if we all join together and encourage people around you and others who may belong to the parish. What are the factors that seem to bother so many people? Father, I don't want this money used to pay off the sex scandal. That has come up continuously. We are beyond that. All of that is paid off. Now, I can't promise that there aren't going to be other sex scandals. I can't promise that. But we're moving in the right direction. But no, none of that money will go to paying off any sex scandals. It's all properly placed so that it, it, pay, it goes to the right entities so that they receive their money. It's not just going into one big lump sum. No, it's going to the entities that it, that it has been um, scheduled for. So you, you don't have to worry about that. Some people are still upset with the arch, uh, archdiocese or the archbishop, and some of you may be even upset that they're moving me. But you know what? You will continue. This is the way it goes. This is what happens in the church. And so we just have to be aware that it's about our community. It's not about just an individual priest. And it's always got to be about our community to keep our community healthy, healthy and moving in the right direction. I know some of you are sad and disappointed. And I know that you've written the archbishop because he told me you wrote the archbishop. But I want you also to realize, though, that the archbishop, like a pastor, he's got to work with uh, the resources that he has. So just be aware of that. Any questions? I'll field questions. Yes, Jim. Okay, the question is, what are we going to do about the organ? The organ project is moving forward. Uh, so where we are with the organ project, just briefly to help all of you, we have written a proxy letter. We have capped the organ project at 500,000. And not to exceed, not to exceed 500,000, that's it. 
Now, what, ha what happened is we started our organ project, but because the archdiocesan capital campaign takes precedent, we had to put it on hold. That's what we did. Now, some of you, Jim is one, he continues to contribute to the organ project. You can do that. You can do that. If you would say, I really want to see the organ go in, I want to, we have a fund set aside for the organ project, just so that you're aware of that. So if you say, I want to uh, contribute to the organ project, that's where your money is going. I promise that. So we will, we will accomplish that task. It's in the workings. Yes. Okay, the, que the question, the reason I'm going to repeat your question, Michael, is because this is going out on YouTube. So there is a question, are there pledge envelopes? What's going to happen is when you make your pledge, Michael, the archdiocese in the uh, fundraising department will send out envelopes to you. Right, Avi? Yes, Avi, by the way, is our representative for the capital campaign. I'm sorry for not introducing you right away. Um, but he, he can also help. But there are envelopes that will come to you. And if you need envelopes, you can also stop in the office. Sarah has envelopes. Um, and for all of our on, online people who are viewing this, you may contact the office with any other questions, especially in regards to the capital campaign as well. Right? Okay. It, great questions. Anything else? Any concerns that you would say you want you want answered? Yes. Yes. Correct. So Jim said he started out with the organ project, and now he wants to conclude. He wants to put that on hold. And he wants to start moving his money now towards the capital campaign. Yes, you can do that. You can pick up with the Oregon uh, project anytime. That will be uh, continual. Yes. That's our hope. So the question is, will the Oregon project be done for the 100th anniversary? That's our direction that we want to go. That's our hope that we can get and raise the money for the 100th anniversary, have it in so that it is ready for that big celebration. And I will be back for that because I want to see the organ. Yes. We have approximately... Um, Sam, do we, Sam, do we have about 80,000 for the Oregon project? 70,000. Okay. We have 70,000 in the Oregon fund. Any other questions? Yes, Judy. That's not, no. So the question was, the third, the third idea was to set aside some money for future finances and so on. Judy's question was, could some of that money go towards the organ fund? I'm going to say no. I think we, we always need a little extra because you don't know what else building-wise could go wrong. We will, I'm sure, we'll raise the money for the organ it may take a little bit, but you know what? You're, but, but see, I always think, have a little extra. That cushion is really important uh, for any parish. You never, and you know with your households, you never want to be check to check. That's a scary, scary proposition, especially if the boiler would go out or the air conditioning would go out. We want to just have a little extra. Any other questions? You can call me, you can email me until the end of this month, and then it goes to the new pastor. So, uh, and, and he'll take over. He'll take over. I have to do this again. 
at St. Eugene's. So uh, they, they've, they've started as, as the pilot program at St. Monica's. They finished theirs. And now I'm in the third wave uh, of working at St. Eugene's. So I'll be uh, in this capital campaign again. So, okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening.